Okay, so we've already learned about epithelial tissues. These are mainly, mainly the linings of things, something that has a base where it connects to another tissue, and then it has an apical side that's open to the environment, whether that's on the inside of your stomach, but it has a surface side and then a base side where it connects. Now, connective tissue, um, we're moving into things that are binding our body parts together. So we're talking about the most diverse and abundant and widely distributed um, tissue type. And its functions, it's got a lot of functions. Support and protection, these are the ones that kind of tend to be the most obvious when we're talking about bones and cartilage. Those are the things that we think of right away when we think of connective tissue or once you learn connective tissue, those are the easiest ones to remember. Um, we also have it binding organs, that's part of its support. It's what we call it, for lack of better description, because it's not very fluid-like necessarily, it's, it's got all kinds of different parts to it, but it's the glue that binds body structures together, in other words, it's just holding them together. We're going to learn that it also produces blood cells and it stores fat, so it has a couple of other really important um, jobs also. So where do we find it? This is where we find tendons, ligaments, body fat, cartilage, bones, there should be a comma there, and blood. So we have a lot in this section. You can see the diversity, that's why it's saying such variety. When we were looking at the epithelial cells, Really, they were divided by their job, but mainly the shape of the cell. We were looking at the shape of the cell. The shape of the cell told us a lot about its function. Where here, when we're talking about connective tissue, what makes up the connective tissue is what's going to tell us a lot about its job. So we're going to have to learn about like these different fibers, because different fibers have different qualities that make them better for stretching or better for strength. And also the ground substance we're going to learn is just kind of basically the, the stuff that it all sits in, non-living stuff, watery sometimes, hard sometimes, depending on if it's bone or if it's cartilage or fat. Um, so you can see here, this is what um, the whole entire, you're going to see some of the cells with the fibers and the ground substance. So here in between everything is the ground substance. In here, like if I were to cut out all these little puzzle-like pieces, in there, everything that it's swimming in is the ground substance. Um, connective tissue also is comprised of different cells. We've got a white blood cell here. We have a melanocyte. We'll learn what that is. But you guys have heard of melanin or melanoma. It's what gives color to our cells. So we're going to find some melanocytes. And you remember, anything that ends in sight is a cell. So we have all these different cell types. And all of these fibers and the ground substance. And it's that combination of the cell type and the fiber type and the ground substance that's going to give it its characteristics of either being really flexible or really hard or whatever job that it's going to have. Um, so here's just an, a quick overview of some of the things that we're going to learn about. The loose connective tissue like collagen, you can see behind the the knee there, here's a picture of a knee. Have you ever heard of someone having a collagen inf injection into their knee? Mm -hmm. Yes? So this is where, this is, they're actually injecting loose connective tissue in there behind the knee. Um, fibrous connective tissue is going to be a little stronger. That's going to be our ligaments. We've got bone. Bone is pretty interesting. They're very unique cells, and it's a very unique tissue. And then you've got um, cartilage here in between bones. Cartilage keeps bones from rubbing together. We've got adipose tissue, so we're going to learn about fat. And then blood, white blood cells and red blood cells. So 
So kind of a big overview. And here's more of a live slide. We looked at this one showing all the different cell types. We've got adipose, red blood cell. We've got some nerves, or not nerves. Um, you should see capillaries. There we go. You can see if we cut, it's like, remember when I showed you the side of the straw? Like the straw would be a capillary or a blood cell, and I snipped it off and showed it to you from the front. That's what it's showing you here, too. So some of these tissues are what we call vascular. In other words, they're going to have some of the veins and arteries running through them. And then this is what it would look like in a real live slide. So you can mainly see this, the fibers. And you can see that there are different types of fibers, like this fiber, this dark purple fiber right running along here, is much different than this thick pink fiber running here. And that's because there are two different types of fibers. Then we also have, you can see, now in this slide we can't necessarily tell the difference between them, but you can tell that we've got different cells here and there. All right. So connective tissue, they're separated by this non-living matrix. When we put ground substance, this like watery or sometimes less than watery, fluid like gel like substance that everything sits in along with the fibers we call that the matrix so everything outside the actual cells in connective tissue is called the matrix so we have the matrix and the matrix is made out of two things ground substance and fibers so the ground substance can be fluid or semi-fluid or even sometimes hard Bones don't, bones don't necessarily, you know, they're going to be, they're going to have a pretty hard ground substance. It's part of what's going to give them some strength. And then the fibers are all the stringy stuff. So we've got three different types of fibers that we're going to learn about. Collagen, elastic, and reticular. So we've got ground substance and fibers that make up the matrix. Now we're just going to go in a little bit further into those types of fibers. Because remember we had the thin dark ones that were in that picture? We had the thin dark ones here, and then we had the thick pink ones. So the first one we're going to learn about is the collagen fibers. They're made out of collagen. Pretty easy to figure out. These are going to be really strong and flexible. So kind of stretchy. And then we've got elastic fibers made out of elastin. Again, pretty easy to figure out there. These are not going to be quite as strong as collagen, but they're going to be even more flexible. I mean, if you think of elastic rubber band you know, pants, very flexible. Think of the same thing with, with th those fibers. They're very stretchy. So they're resilient. And then you've got reticular fibers, and they form an, a network. They're thin, and they're highly branched, and they are kind of, they're collagenous, meaning that they're made out of collagen. These are going to be um, a little bit more for structure. We can read that. So we've got collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. And most of the time, you're not going to find just one type of fiber in a cell. A lot of times, these cells are going to have a mixture of different types. But if it's a, if it's um, something, if it's one, if it's an area of the body that needs a lot more flexibility, it's going to have more of the elastic fibers. If it needs really strong support but some flexibility, it's going to be the collagen fibers. If it needs a lot of hard support, a lot of networking, and keeping things held in the right position and staying strong, giving it structure, then it's going to be, they're going to have more of the reticular fibers. All right. So the ground substance, just to kind of review, is the non-living material, and it's produced by the connective tissue cells themselves. So it makes this ground substance. 
And then this is where the cells and the protein fibers, all those different fibers, that's where they reside, is in the ground substance. So sometimes it's viscous, like in blood. Viscous means um, slick, slippery. Um, Semi-solid, so it's not quite solid, but it's not really super slick either if it's found in cartilage. So it's a little bit thicker, more like a gelatin, I suppose, um, for the semi-solid. And then solid, as in bone. We've got ground substance here, too, um, that we'll learn. And these are a whole, this, these are a series of bone cells, osteocytes, and ground substance and fibers. And like we said, when you put all of that together, this ground substance and the fibers, it's called the matrix. Or the extracellular matrix. Because remember, this is stuff that's actually outside the cell, but we consider it part of the tissue because it really has so much to do with the characteristics of the tissue or the job that that tissue is doing. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking at connective tissue. We're looking at the different parts that make up all connective tissue. They've got the cells themselves, ground substance, which can be viscous, semi-solid, or solid. And then we've got three different fibers, protein fibers. And those protein fibers are made out of keratin. Do you remember talking, learning about that? Fibers are made out of keratin, which is a protein. But we have different types of fibers, too. Some are stretchier than others. Some have more support. Some are more for structure. Okay. All right, so here's kind of a look at, we're going to have four classifications of connective tissue. So we've got all of those parts. Now, all of these classifications have ground substance, fibers, and cells. But they in different, you know, different um, amounts of those things and different combinations, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So we've got fibrous connective tissue. We've got cartilage, bone, and blood. Four very different things, but all four part of, they're all classifications of connective tissue. But see, then this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing because now we can break that down into parts too. So that's why today I just want to talk about it. And then tomorrow we're going to actually do, you know, something that maybe will be more visual for you guys in sorting out those different parts or those different um, classifications. But today, let's just take a look at them. So I said we've got fibrous connective. So up here is our fibrous connective tissue. Or sometimes we call it, we've got loose connective. And then we also have dense connective. These all fall under fibrous connective. We've got areolar, adipose, and reticular for the loose connective. So you can imagine loose connective means that they aren't quite tight, as tightly packed. And it makes sense. If you look at areolar, we're talking about something that's under the epithelia. So we've got, we just learned all those epithelial cells, right? Simple squamous, stratified squamous, columnar, pseudostratified, right? All those epi... Sometimes underneath them, you have a layer of connective tissue. And often if it's underneath the epithelia, or under the skin also, um, you've got loose connective tissue, usually part of mucous membranes, 
and then we package around the organs and capillaries. Areolar and adipose are very similar. They're both like fatty cells. Here, this one, if it's adipose, is going to be under the skin, around the kidneys, the eyeballs, in the abdomen, and in the breasts. And again, it's their big, like fat cells is essentially what they are. Then you've got reticular, which is a little bit different. See how they did these two in red and one in black? Because these two are very similar, where this one's a little different. It's still loose connective. It's not very densely packed, but it's different. And we find that in the lymph organs, bone marrow, and spleen. Um, in the bone marrow is where we make blood cells. The lymph organs, does anybody remember what our lymph organs do? The lymphatic system. What's that? It filters. It's helping filter in the skin or in the in in our dermal region in tissues is what I'm trying to say. Sorry. And it also reduces um, the retention of water, right? So we don't have water retention. So it's trying to regulate the tissues. Um, in the way that it doesn't hold on to water or other things. And in the meantime, it's also filtering it. Also, it plays a huge part in our immune system. The lymphatic system is a huge part or player in helping our immune system. All right, then dense connective. Now, this gets a little bit easier because the dense ones, it makes more sense that tendons and ligaments need to be more dense because we need them to be strong. They're either holding together bones, ligaments go bone to bone, and tendons go muscle to bone. And we're going to break that down again some more. And then dense irregular. Here we're holding together like parts of the digestive tract. Um, capsules. Capsules are like this sack that goes around the organs and it needs to be really strong so it's a fibrous capsule of these really dense cells that hold in the organ and then we'll talk about cartilage and that there are three types of cartilage hyaline cartilage elastic cartilage and fibrocartilage and we'll break those into its parts and then bone and blood um, we'll spend some time on too. Yes. Um, and that could be, I just okay, put this aside and push pause. <laughs> Okay, so the question was brought up that reticular in our book is labeled differently than this, uh, than this table right here. So we're going to go by what I wrote in down here. And actually, this is the outline that we're going to follow in the next, you know, tomorrow when we talk about, well, and tomorrow, I don't know that we'll break, this might not be until Wednesday. But we'll break this down, and this is what we're going to follow. We're going to lo learn loose connective tissue first, an areolar and adipose, then dense connective tissue, regular and irregular, then reticular. So we'll separate them all out. <laughs>